Hello and welcome back to another ILTV episode. Today I'm joined by Alan and Leslie from It'll Be Fun. They have a great YouTube channel that's a brilliant resource for anyone looking to have an adventure in their retirement and make a move overseas. So before you lived in Madeira, guys, you came from the US and now you're traveling around in your vintage WV bug. That sounds so exciting with your son, Wolf. So guys, welcome to ILTV. I'm so happy you could join me. How are you today? Great. Bon dia. Glad to be here. Yeah. Great. Glad to be here. Good. Okay. So guys, let's get into it. Before you moved to um, Portugal, where did you live before? Where in the US and what exactly was your life looking like right back then? Sure. We were in a community about 50 miles outside of Chicago, a suburb called Crystal Lake. It was a beautiful little stone cottage by the lake. We enjoyed it very much there, but we were ready for the next chapter of our life to begin. Right. And so was it always a passion of your guys to, to maybe to make a move overseas? Was it something that you always shared that vision for in terms of your, where your life was going to end up? Yeah. No, <laughs> actually, actually, it wasn't. We spent a lot of many years traveling in the United States, obviously visited Europe throughout our lives, but many years traveling in the United States, we were going to go to the Smoky Mountains mm -hmm. um, because we like mountains. Yeah. So as time moved forward, that dream ebbed for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Simply when it was time for him to retire, Um, he was ready to retire. I was not. And financially, it was best if I continued to work. Right. Um, but based upon health, you know, time is short and you don't want to waste it. Right. This is true. This is true. And so yeah. was that your motivation behind the move, just to make the most of the everyday? Uh, that and the fact that we, we knew we couldn't stay where we were at in Chicago. That was too expensive to stay there. The property taxes right. and the cost of living were... cost prohibitive. So, you know, we expanded our search uh, outside of the United States and ended up here. Yeah, I actually saw something recently. Um, it was an article. Um, I'll actually link it below. Um, but it was just the cost of living in the US as opposed to um, some other countries, but in, in, in terms of a retirement. And I think the figure was closer to 800,000 um, that you would need for a very kind of just average retirement for, for that would cover you may, maybe for 15 years. Um, so it's just extortion amount of money that's needed. Well, and, and to be honest, that wouldn't be the best. Right. That's probably right. not enough money in most places. You know, yeah. if you owned your home, you know, if you owned your home outright, yes, you could have a nice life. Um, yeah, but literally that's how we ended up is, is being in that situation. And a friend of mine, he was looking outside the United States. And so he started talking to me about it and I said, well, how are you finding information on that? You know, right. this is years ago. And he said, well, I have this magazine here. I'll send you the link. Was it ours? Yeah. Magazine was international living. Oh, I love that. And so we got the magazine and That just started resource. going through it. Yeah, it has mm -hmm. been a really good resource. Uh, we did the, uh, some of the seminars. Yeah. We bought some of the books from International Living that have been very helpful. Right we bought some of the books multiple times yes. and handed them yeah. out to people. <laughs> so so, that, was, that was a big help. Yeah, I mean, it really was. It was the first start. Yeah. Um, in exploring the thought process and going outside the country mm -hmm. because that, and when we you, just hadn't gone there. Yeah. And you're, when your friend said that to you, that he's looking overseas, were you like, you're crazy or like, what was your initial reaction? <laughs> that was that, you know who that was, I know who but, it was. He, yeah. but he travels the world. He, yeah. You okay. know? And so for him, it didn't it's like going to the, It's like going to the corner store for him. Right. I right. mean, he literally was normal. someplace, someplace in the world, you know, six months out of the year. Um, yeah. But we weren't, you know, we had had right. a different life. We traveled a lot, but not in that, not like at his level. And um, so for us, it was like, ooh, you know, yeah. so that was, that was so fun. It was fun. It was kind of and... dream, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Finally. And was, was there one of you guys who was more excited than the other? Did you have to kind of bring the other person along? We find that with a lot of couples at our conferences, there might be one that's so excited about the idea and the other's like, I don't know. Was that the I case think, for you guys or you shared that, 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 that idea? I think, 
initially, I think Leslie was more excited than me. Mm -hmm. um, but once you started talking about it more, I became excited too. And, and it wasn't very long before we were both on board and, you know, really trying to pursue yeah. that. Yeah, because part of that was simply in that I was looking south, right? you know, in the United States. So I was going south and, you know, but every once in a while he'd say, well, okay, we'd be, I'm, whatever, you're looking at Ecuador. And then I'd suddenly say, well, how big are the bugs? <laughs> you know? That's right. That's, <laughs> yeah. You know, the silly things, you know, that you're worried, you find yourself worried about. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, can we drink the water? Mm -hmm. What kind of venomous snakes they have right. there? <laughs> But they're really important questions that like that yeah, was yeah. hard of you guys to ask that at, like when you were when you were thinking about these places. And then you know we actually had been to Ireland and right. we loved Ireland. Ireland, and, Isle of Man. Oh yeah, yeah. If we could yeah. live on the Isle of Man. Uh, <laughs> but um, we we didn't feel that we could af afford to go there, <laughs> so yeah. you know it was, it was a money issue, and so then suddenly. Uh, he actually, we'd been in Spain and all these things, and suddenly you came up with yeah, Portugal. with Portugal right next door to Spain. Maybe you ought to check out Portugal. Mm -hmm. So right, yeah. and so how did you decide on Madeira? Then how did that come up? Uh, yeah. it, well, actually, it was kind of by accident. I was looking at places for for sale in the southern part of Portugal, Algarve area, and w was looking for listings on houses and condos. And every once in a while, there'd be an odd listing with mountains. And I go, where is this in the Algarve? I don't, I don't remember seeing mountains in the Algarve. And then reading about the listing and found out it's in Madeira. And I said, where is Madeira? Oh, it's an island that's not even in Portugal. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's how we found it. We found it by accident. And did you so go I, for like a, a, a checkout tour of it or did you, how did that work? Did you go to check it out first or was it just something sure, you checked yeah. out? Yeah. 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 Well, we were um, like everybody else during COVID, we were uh, limited. We couldn't travel outside the United States because right. of the travel restrictions. But when the travel restrictions finally lifted in June of 2021, July of 2021, we were here mm -hmm. on an extensive scouting trip. Right. Yeah. And and well, go for it. Sorry. Oh, no, I was no. going to say we had scheduled like three different times trying to come. To try Thinking that they were going to lift, they were going to lift, they were going to lift, and they we had to cancel them. And so then when we finally got here, we stayed for six weeks, and we literally stayed all around the island. Because mm -hmm. I mean, we, by then, we were totally prepared to see every nook and cranny yeah. of the island and make sure that we liked it. Because he was in love. She <laughs> wasn't sure. She didn't know if she could deal with the roads and the height difference and okay things like that. So I had to bring her on board. So yeah, hence, hence the really long tour. Yeah, and that we had to go everywhere because if I didn't like every That's bit of it, it, then though. we weren't going to come. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such a big decision that you're making. It you is. Know? It is. So yeah, if you can take that 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 time and just make sure it's the right spot for you, I mean, it's gonna going to benefit you in the long run and so what were some of those decision making tools that you used in terms of where you wanted to focus your search because obviously there's a big world out there so what were, what were some of those some of those decision well the tools? criteria that you always tell everybody about because I told you I kept my whole life I kept saying I was going to go to the Smoky Mountains and um so with mountains mountains on the top of the list yeah. and the ocean. mountains oceans couldn't be too hot couldn't be too mm -hmm. cold we were done with shovel and snow yeah. Um, yes. It had to be safe. Mm -hmm. uh, the bugs had to be small. Yeah, the bugs <laughs> were small. Uh, had, had good access to, well, we're closer to Europe, so it had to have good access to get to mainland Europe if, if, we, if we wanted to go visit mm -hmm. someplace. Um, and originally, we were looking for good access back to the United States, hence mm -hmm. why we looked south. Mm -hmm. So for other people that are thinking about it. And then we did come to the conclusion that you can get back and forth to Europe so easy it's not a big deal mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so yeah like Madeira is so interesting I mean it's it's definitely like a a bit more adventuresome location but that sounds like that's the type of of life that you guys wanted to do I, I thought I obviously check out your YouTube channel a lot it's great but I loving all your walks and your hikes and it's so kind of fresh and outdoorsy and it's such a healthy way to kind of live your life and yeah. But 
Go, sorry, go for it, Alan. No, I was going to say, we were doing those kind of things back in the States. We would go on uh, okay. long walks. So we just took what we were doing sort of and oh, really? evolved it to the next chapter here in Madeira. So um, we, oh, we love the outdoors and this place is perfect for that. Yeah, he's a, he was a, he's a retired mechanic. I'm a horticulturist. We got, you oh, know, we, we lived in a sense. little town that, you know, everybody's garden is fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you know, so all of that we kind of brought with us. And this is a pretty colorful island in with yeah. regards to plant material mm-hmm. and um, flowers and things, out, outdoor things. Mm-hmm. So and and now saying you're a mechanic now I I understand the the bringing the car over. <laughs> yeah, that was your other baby, was it? That was yeah. Well, I had it longer than I've known Leslie. Right. So right. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> it it was coming. So it, yeah, the car was always coming. Yeah, our car was always coming. And then, you know, I was going to the Smoky Mountains always before I met him, and he was taking his car wherever he was going. So so you meshed, you got the mountains, you brought mm-hmm. the car. Yeah, and so. When did your son join you guys? Um, Before we were moving here, we gave him the the option if he wanted to stay in the States or did he want to tag along with us on this adventure? And he thought about it for a while. And he said, I think I'll stick around and see what happens over in Europe. So he came over with us and he he really likes it here too. He he enjoys it as much as we do. So Yeah. I think he found it interesting when he, because at first, you remember, he's so young. He was like, you know what? I haven't lived my life in Chicago yet, Mm -hmm. you know, in the U.S. yet. So what an odd question, because his brain had never thought that. And so at first he wasn't kind of calm, remember? Mm -hmm. And then one day, and I thought that, you know, as every young person would, they just think, well, mom and dad will wait. So yeah, mom and dad said we're not waiting. Uh, we're not going. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going. And so, yeah. but we'd love for you to come. And I have a stepdaughter from my first marriage that lives in Paris, and she right. for many, many years. And oh, so she's close now. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and and so for for our son, for Wolf. The thought process of going outside the country wasn't on his list, but it also wasn't something he had never heard of because he has yeah. a stepsister that's done that. Right. Okay. That's it's so special that he's there with you, though. I mean, it's it's oh, great yeah. you're on this adventure together. Mm-hmm. You know, we like, have such, we're we're so, blessed because so yeah. many people just don't have that that option in life. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so, what does your life? What does your daily life look like now? Well, Typical day for you guys. Um, a lot of it's has to re, it revolves around our YouTube channel. Um, it's right. Quite a, it's quite an endeavor to produce these videos. So it's, it, it's a big part of the life, but that the fun of it is I get to take the Volkswagen out and we get to explore different parts of the Island in the mm-hmm. course of doing that. So it's, it's, it's a labor of love. It's, but we're, we're always going someplace to a swim area, to the beach, uh, to the mountains. Lobotas. Yeah, we go on hikes. Yeah. Obviously, we go on so, hikes all the time. Yeah. Um, new coffee shops. New new friends, new coffee shops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Driving down the road, testing out little coffee shops. You just, they're everywhere, mm-hmm. up in the mountains yeah. and stuff. That's and great. sometimes they look uninviting, but they're not. No. It's a That's small place, thing. but we have not discovered everything by any means. So yeah. it'll, it'll be a long time before it gets old. And what's we do not the expat community here. like? Sorry, I, I jumped but, over you there. It's growing, it's expanding. Okay. Um, there are uh, a, a lot of uh, Americans in our expat circle of friends that we had. Uh, and there's constantly people visiting that uh, seek us out too. Um, right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, people from England, uh, mm-hmm. people from Germany, mm-hmm when we're, you know, we're out and walking about, we can hear the different languages being spoken, but yeah, there's, yeah. It's, it's extensive. Yeah, it's which is normal right. for people from Europe to hear, uh-huh. but for us, yeah. you know, even being in Chicago, we did hear more languages than you, well, where we were originally from in Ohio. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, the community is, is good size, but the, the American community wasn't necessarily large. No. When we were first here, everybody would ask us, and we'd say, oh, yeah, we know all 10 people. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're still, they're, they're, they're trickling in from the United States. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. Mm-hmm. Probably probably down to you guys as well, though. And so on your YouTube channel, what was the motivation behind starting that? Oh, that's even more important. Well, you know, he got a camera and I got a camera as our, you know, we're leaving the country gifts to mm-hmm. ourselves, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so between, we, we now had cameras. So what were we going to do with them? But realistically, it kind of worked hand in hand is during the research phase, we had beat everything. I mean, I built spreadsheets. So I built a spreadsheet on okay. every country that we ever looked at. And then the cities within those countries, you know, to from a cost of living perspective and any information that I could get. And so one of the things was getting information that I truly felt uh, that I could believe in. Yeah. Um, on top of, because I got great information from IL, but I couldn't validate with additional mm-hmm. information. And so um, there we go. So mm-hmm. it was like, okay, yeah. we worked really hard. So let's offer that additional validation um, for people that are out there mm-hmm. looking. They've, yeah. you know, they've discovered IL and, you know, the, the big sources but, you know, sometimes they just want to hear it from somebody that's physically yeah. doing it. Let's tell you Absolutely. what works and let's, let's yeah. share what doesn't. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 And it's that like honesty and it's, it's great to have people there, you know, experiencing it firsthand. And so is that, has, has that changed your, you know, your, your outlook in any way? Have you, you know, is, is that why you keep going to kind of help these people? I know you have a, like a good community that you've built. I'm sure it's, it's been a great resource for people. How has that been in terms of building that community? Well, it's, it's quite enjoyable. We really like yeah. doing it. Um, it's, it's become, um, quite fun. So as yeah. much as we can share and with, with everybody, uh, we try to do that as much as possible. Well, and we learn so much yeah. from everybody that we meet, you know, that's, that's, one of the things he was speaking earlier that he felt, um, you know, that you didn't realize you could be so outgoing. Yeah. You know, and you have a um, great voice, Alan. <laughs> you have a great voice. I know I've said that to you before, but it's the perfect voice for, for yeah. online. It's like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What was the story? He told a story, and this is, goes with the voices. Somebody said something about his voice, and he said, Well, I spent my whole life underneath a car. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew I had a voice. I didn't know I had a voice. Surprise. No, you do. Yeah. You must have been perfecting it underneath when you were, when you were working <laughs> on those cars. I missed, I missed my calling. Maybe. You were talking to me. <laughs> yeah. Back, so, back just a bit, to be, I guess, about you know, making the move, I guess. Has it changed your outlook on life? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it has. Yeah. It showed us that, you know, because obviously it takes courage to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. And and we peg off of each other um, in that if I'm not feeling strong about something and he is, you know, or vice versa. So yeah. we, we browbeat each other into having the courage to move forward. So we've, you know, the outlook in life is that you can do this. Sure. We know that we can do this and that no matter what tomorrow brings, we, we've got it. You don't have to have millions of dollars. Right. And that's right. probably the hardest thing because, you know, you saw, we never had millions of dollars. He was a mechanic yeah. and I was a horticulturist. That's, you know, not, doesn't usually equate to millions of dollars. No. Mm-hmm. Right? But, but I think one of the best things that's happened is, is, ex- is expanded our minds that mm-hmm. instead of, automatically going into defensive mode thinking, uh, well, I don't know if I can do that to sure. I think we can do that. Let's try it. You know, it's a different attitude. Right. So a lot more yeah. positive. Yeah, that's great. And what have you learned most about yourselves personally? Well, that we can do whatever we, we can want. do it. Yeah. Really, yeah. really if, seriously. If that, we want to do it, we'll make it happen. Right. That you, yeah. You know, you, t- you've the, your worst critic, regardless of your age, is yourself. It's the person looking back at you in the mirror, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what you, that's what you learn is to stop being defensive to that person that's looking back at you in the mirror because they're the only yeah. one told you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. You said you, it, it just from from chatting to you guys though. You have a great partnership, you know that like that. I, I suppose that's quite special in terms of you know bringing each other on. And as you said, if, if you're not feeling comfortable with something, it's great to have that balance between the mm-hmm. two of you. Um, and I'm, I'm sure. And we're Midwestern, right? Yeah, yeah. We're always Midwestern, which means that, you know, we, um, 
tend to browbeat each other into it, you know, and I mean, more so where yeah. people are, we've met a whole bunch of English people. You asked about culture. The English culture is interesting because they're so nice to each other. Yeah, they're so always. reserved. And Americans are pretty <laughs> You're more like the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're like, yeah. you know, we're like screaming at each other. And people are like, yeah. Yeah. what's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. We always talk like this. We always talk like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's definitely an Irish trait too. I mean, it's like we've a, we've a lot of sarcasm, and mm -hmm. some people don't get that, and they think we're just being kind of mean to each other. Myself, my husband, but that's just part of our humor. So it makes I totally it fun. Get that. Yes, totally. I totally agree. And so, what tips would you give to someone who was looking to do something similar? You know, do something, have a bit more adventure. What would you say to them? Courage. Courage. Yeah. Just take the, take the time, realize you can do it, and make it happen. Um, and the stuff, we all, regardless of where you are in the world, we collect stuff, right? We all somehow have this, he who gets to the finish line with the most stuff wins, mm -hmm. right? Most toys. So Alan had a garage full of toys. Yeah, yeah. Took and me, he had to get rid of. Took so me, there's, there's took a, me a year to pare down everything. I brought basically the essential off? stuff to keep the Volkswagen running, and mm -hmm. and that's it. So and it was very hard to pare down everything else. Well, yeah, you, you accumulate so many things. When you get to the point in life that it's time to go to the next chapter, you don't need to drag things along it's with a, you. That's your tip: is you can get rid of those yeah. things realistically. Yeah. Have the courage. You can get rid of those things. You you used them. You owned them. Now move on. And, and then when you find your new magic place, do all the research necessary to before mm -hmm. you go. Learn everything you can about it. Read. Yeah. Explore. Yeah. Um, well, and spend as much time as you can on the ground there. If, sure. if that's yeah. multiple trips or one really long trip, don't limit yourself as to exactly what you're going to see or do. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think, yeah, like definitely getting boots on the ground and Finding, finding other resources who have gone before you. I think that's, you know, yeah. great to get those kind of insights from people and reach out, reach out to people. I know like you guys are obviously great at, you know, having that two-way dialogue with people and being a resource. So, you know, more of that. I think that's what's, what the internet has done for us, which is it amazing. Has. Well, yeah. it's like we still have a couple that we watch in Ecuador. And um, just simply because... Even today, there are things that they talk about. It's like, yeah, yeah, we can do that. You know, yeah. I mean, so we still utilize the same resources, even though we didn't choose the same country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's when you share a type of life ethos, I guess, or, you know, that you share similar values in terms of, you know, not settling for the traditional or, you know, doing something a little bit different. It's interesting when you find those, you know, your people. And it doesn't matter where you are. It's just that, you know, yeah. you, you can you can see yourselves in them, which is which is great. Um, and so what's next for you? Is it is is Madeira your your new home um, or is there anywhere else calling you? Well, we really like Madeira quite a bit, uh, but we're going to have an open mind about the future. We, you know, five years ago, we didn't know we were right. coming here. So right. five years from now, we don't know. But. For the time being, we have lots to explore here yet. So we're very happy here. Yeah. And have you just interesting or interested to know, have you done any traveling outside of Portugal? Have you gone anywhere in the last couple of look since living in Madeira? Have you done any any trips? Uh, we went, we went, <laughs> we went our here's Benny Carter's our first trip. We did the big walk on Madeira, which is where you hike from one end of the island to the other and you stay in bed and breakfasts or boutique right. hotels. So it's, it's not tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's designed for people our age. It's perfect. Um, but when we did this, oh, we met a young couple who okay. were getting married. And so they oh. got back. They were from England. And when they got home, they sent us a video, only as young people do today, mm -hmm. inviting us to their wedding. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, wow. So Yeah, so, yeah, we went so to, off to England we went. Yeah, for that's three amazing. Weeks. Yeah. yeah, so we planned a whole trip around going to London, you know, all around, and of course we went to the wedding. Um, but we planned that whole trip. That was awesome because we hadn't done that. No, it was, yeah, it was great. You know, it was a great adventure. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we've done oh. that. We obviously spent a lot of times on mainland Portugal mm -hmm. because right. we hadn't spent so much time, and you know, he fell in love with Porto. 
Right. You know, yeah. and then, you know, we hadn't been to Puerto Santo, which is a sister island to here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so we fell in love with Puerto Santo, every place we go to. And we did this when we were in the United States. We're like, oh, we could live here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so how, you, you'd be, so you went, you said you came in 21 for your scouting trip. And when did you move? We came here in July of 2021. Mm-hmm. And, no, and November 1st, we were living here permanently. Wow. So we, when we got back from our scouting trip, we would preloaded yeah. a real estate agent and uh, international mover just in the event that our trip right. proved it was going to be the right thing to do. So we had preloaded everything. When we got back from our mm-hmm. trip, we met our real estate agent in our driveway. She and was standing in the driveway. Put the sign in the yard, we're moving. So, But she's from, she's from Poland, so she knew we were yeah, yeah. You know, she has, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she she's adventuresome herself. No, because we did. We we spent so much time anticipating due to cold COVID right. the opportunity. Yeah, you had the time to plan. We did. So we had planned out everything, mm-hmm. you know, down yeah. to fingerprints had been taken. I mean, we were totally ready. All over. So unless something was oh, dreadfully the, wrong right. from what we were learning about, you know, Portugal and Madeira specific, right. that it was probably going to happen. And it did. Yeah. And once I, yeah. once we got back, everything was a whirlwind. Like those three months after we got back, were yeah, we filed for it, the visa within twenty four hours of hitting the ground. Yeah, that, wow. but that we were ready. We had yeah. all everything ready. Yeah. yeah. And what was that process like? In our case, it was right at the end of uh, COVID, so mm-hmm. we ours was all online. Right. The process today is you would put all, get all your paperwork together and make a BFS global appointment, just like you do in a lot of, from a lot of countries. And then once you get your appointment, you go in and submit all your paperwork in person right. at one of the consulates in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, for us, it was a little different, but it's not hard. It's just right. really right. detailed. Yeah, There's nothing detailed. hard about it. It's just simply being very detailed about what you're submitting and if they, you know, recommend that you put X amount of dollars in your bank account and you can put a little more, do so. Because the stronger your application, the better off you are. It doesn't hurt anything. They're not going to keep your money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And what was the biggest culture shock moving there? Hmm. We talked about this. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what we decided our culture shock was. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't um, that obvious. <laughs> well, the, I don't know. We we, we kind of, the, the people here are so friendly to us. Um, yeah. We're really amazed at how nice we seem to fit in, even though we don't speak the language yet. Um, and that's really, what we talked about is yeah. that we, we didn't, a couple of weird things that we discovered about the U.S. is we that you thought you knew. We didn't realize how loud we really are. Mm-hmm. Um, an opinion, you know, how brash we really are. We also didn't realize that everybody, when we first get her, they talk about guns. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, no, really, we don't all run around shooting each other. I <laughs> promise you. Yeah. That's <laughs> so that, that was odd. That's hard for them you to know, it's, understand. Right. Yeah, so they ask questions about that. And people still yeah. do, which we're, we're, we're not so, you know, where we don't right. understand the question. question. Today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So I mean, it sounds funny. The culture shock was the in in what other people thought of us. Yeah. Of the right. Yeah. And what Not about the true. language barrier? Did that was that an issue? No, we're never gonna get that. Well, yeah, it will eventually get it figured out. It's just gonna take some time. Um it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, I guess. But um But it's that you're able to communicate and Oh, yeah. Um, Maybe, yeah. you know, simply everybody speaks English. Yeah. I mean, so that okay. was a beautiful culture shock. Now, right. as, as Americans, we, we very much understand that learning the language in a new country is what we must We're do. We're obligated to do. Right. To do right. It's our duty to yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, a, that's an American thing. If we're going to live here, we need <laughs> so to do that. It yeah. sounds us bringing our culture with us. And yeah. that we, we we expect people to learn the language when they come to the United States. But here, if you go someplace, you go to the store right. and you start speaking Portuguese and you're stumbling, they will switch to English, English. and have the conversation yeah. in English. So it's it makes it convenient. However, it makes it hard to learn if they're to all learn. 
they're all switching yeah. to English for you, you know, yeah. but that's yeah. nice. Yeah. They, they probably just really appreciate you trying, you know, like that, like you're not, you know, you're not going in there just expecting, expecting them to, to speak in your language. You know, you're at least giving it a shot. So they probably yeah. really well, what did I do yesterday? We were walking down the road and he's yelling Boatar to some man and I yelled, oh, we're gonna. <laughs> Oh, I can't take her anywhere. <laughs> you use like the wrong words, just pop he out. He laughed and he said, oh, "It's okay." You to yourself. I'm gonna. You were like, "I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get involved here." <laughs> so then in English, in English, I said, "Well, that was the wrong word." And in English, he replied, oh, "That's okay." Oh my no! Oh, oh my. it was so. You know, there we are. There's a. You're not taking it too serious, so that sounds good. Sounds like my type of people. I like it. Guys, before we finish up, I just want to know um, if anyone wants to check out Madeira or even just travel there, what are your three must-sees, must-dos there? Um, you need to do a Lovato walk. Yeah. At least one Lovato walk when you come here, just to see the beauty and appreciate nature and you sunrise. get the feel for Yeah. And then a sunrise. You need to go up and see the sunrise when you're up in the top of the mountains and you're looking down on the clouds as the sun comes up, it's just, it's gorgeous. You really got to do that. What else? Mine would be to go see the lower silver forest. That lower silver forest. Yeah. But see that's the, plant material. Yeah. But right. it's a beautiful forest up high. Uh, and, you don't even have to like trees yeah. and they're just lovely. Who doesn't trees. like trees? Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just beautiful but obviously we've given you things that are nature right yeah but there's festivals here oh, yeah. and and when it doesn't matter when you come there will be a festival there's still like a festival here every week of the year so just go oh, i mean there wow. will be one we promise if the, you come for a week there's going to be a festival somewhere so go do it mm -hmm. yeah because they're really into it it's lovely yeah and where's your favorite? You've mentioned the coffee. Coffee um, is a place that you go get coffees a lot. Is there any of your favorite coffee spots? We do have a couple little favorite spots that we'll go, you know, like local one. Um, it's called Charlotte's Place. It's, it's Charlotte's just right Place. By the water. Mm -hmm. huh? Charlotte's Place. I love those there. little, like, local yeah. recommendations. Right. Yeah. And it's just right there. And then there's some places down by the water in Praia Formosa. Um, which is a beach area mm -hmm. and they're just lovely little places all along the edges they're not um overpriced you know tourism yeah. overpriced they're lovely you can go for a coffee you can go you know whenever for a, an so, evening drink mm -hmm. yeah that sounds great guys this has been brilliant and so just to to say again where can everyone follow your journey online sure you can you follow us at youtube at it'll be fun Yes, and I will make sure I link it below as well so everyone can check you out. As I said, it's a brilliant resource. Um, even if it's not Portugal, you want to check out just in terms of, yeah. you know, what you should be thinking, how you should be uh, tackling this. And, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed kind of following you along. Uh, Good. Thank you very much. Keep up the videos. And we will be doing something together soon, which is exciting. You'll be joining us for our Go Overseas seminar. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm excited to work We're with you. We're excited, aren't we? Yeah. 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 It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. See, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I like that. <laughs> uh, well, guys, look, it was so great to talk to you. And thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. And there you have it, another episode of ILTV. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below, turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos, and join me for next week's episode.